In this video, you will learn how to create a new design file and a component in the context of an assembly, differentiate between bodies and components, utilize the browser and the timeline, edit and delete a feature, understand Fusion 360's sketching and modeling process, create a 3D thread feature, review a component's or an assembly's property information, and assign a material to a component. To create a new design file inside of Fusion 360, either go from the File menu and click New Design, press the Control and the N key, or click the plus symbol, which will be to the right of the tabs of any open document files. When you're working in a component file, at the top of the browser, you'll see a single cube. You can also create a component in the context of the assembly. To create a new component in the context of the assembly, from the Assemble menu, click New Component. In the dialog box, you can change the name of the component. At the top of the browser, notice that you now have three cubes. Those three cubes represent that you are now working in an assembly. So let's talk about sketching. So to create a sketch, go to the Create menu and click on Create Sketch. The origin planes will appear, and note that these planes are parallel to the views on the view cube. And the sketch palette will also appear. So the sketch palette contains common sketching options. And note that the top area contains options for the active tool if they're available. When the sketch is fully constrained, all the geometry will turn black. And in the browser, if you expand the Sketches folder, you'll see a lock symbol to the left of the specific sketch. Next, let's talk about bodies and components. A body is a solid, continuous 3D shape. For example, if I had a box and I split that box into two, then I would have two bodies. Bodies can be used in the modeling process. A body uses the component's origin. Bodies cannot be used for motion, for example, you cannot apply assembly joints or use them in animations. They will not show up in a parts list. And in the browser, the bodies will appear in a bodies folder. A component is a part that is capable of motion. Assembly joints can be used to position two components together. Note that in the browser, a component will be listed as a single cube. And a component can also be inserted into an assembly file. And notice that a link symbol will appear to the right of the cube. A component has a unique origin. A component serves as a container for a variety of design objects, including bodies, sketches, and features. A component will appear in a parts list. Next, let's talk about the browser and the timeline. Inside of Fusion 360, we have a browser that will appear on the left side of the canvas. And the browser contains top-level information for components, joints, and as we saw in the previous slide, we also display sketch information. The timeline is shown at the bottom of the canvas, and the timeline lists all of the features for that design and or component. You can edit a feature by either double-clicking on it or right-click on it, and in the menu here you can delete a feature or you can edit the feature. Also in the timeline, you can change the order of a feature by clicking and dragging on it. Next, let's talk about combined and single tools. For example, the horizontal and vertical sketch constraint are combined inside of Fusion 360. How this tool works is lines are aligned horizontally or vertically based on their current angle. For example, if I had a line at 10 degrees, it would change to horizontal. If I had a line at 80 degrees, it then would become vertical. Note that you can also use the horizontal vertical sketch constraint to align points either horizontally or vertically. Inside of Fusion 360, we have single tools. So what I mean by this, instead of having separate tools for operations like mirroring or patterning a feature or a component, there's one tool. And then in the dialog box, change the type to match specifically what it is you would like to mirror or pattern. So now let's look at some of these items inside of Fusion 360. So here you can see I have my cylinder file. So down in the timeline, I just have a single feature. And in the browser, you can see that I'm working on a single component file as it's represented with a single cube. So next, I'm going to create a new design file. I'm just going to click on the plus icon. And again, you can see that I'm working on a component file. If I want to create a component in the context of the assembly, I'm going to go under the Assemble menu and click on New Component. And in the dialog box, I'm going to change the name. And then click OK. In the browser, you can see that the top symbol has been changed to three cubes. Again, telling me that I'm working in the context of an assembly and my mold design component is active. Next, I'm going to create a sketch and the origin planes appear. Here, I'm going to select the plane that will be parallel to the top view in the view cube. Now, what I want to do is draw a center rectangle. What I could do is go under the Create menu, Rectangle, Center Rectangle. But an easier way, I'm just going to click on the Two Point Rectangle command. 
And then in the sketch palette, I'm going to change the option to center rectangle. And I'm going to click on the origin. And I'm going to define the size of the rectangle by typing in four, tab, two, and enter. Notice that all four lines are black because it's fully constrained. In the browser, if I expand the mold design component and expand the sketches folder, here, here you'll see the lock symbol, again, representing that the sketch is fully constrained. Now, if I delete one of these dimensions, you'll notice that the two horizontal lines are blue, meaning that it is under constrained and the lock symbol is no longer present in the browser. My design intent is changed and I want this to be a square. The easiest way to do this is to use the equal constraint from the constraints menu. And I'm going to select on one of the horizontal and one of the vertical lines. And here again, you can see that all four lines are black. And again, the lock symbol appears in the browser. Next, what I want to do is finish the sketch. Next, I want to extrude this profile. So I'm going to go under the create menu and click on the extrude tool, or you could have pressed the E key. In the canvas, I can click and drag on the arrow or enter a value. Now note in the dialog box, down at the bottom, the operation by default is set to new body. So I'm gonna keep that as my default. Go ahead, click okay. Now in the browser, I'll expand the bodies folder. And here you can see I have body number one. To make edits to your design, you can do this from the timeline. If I wanna edit the sketch, I can simply double click on it. Then in the canvas, I'm going to double click on the dimension, enter a new value, and then press enter on the keyboard. Next, I'm going to finish the sketch. So I could do this either from the top right menu or click on finish sketch in the sketch palette. Another option for editing a feature is to right click on it in the timeline. Here I have an option to delete that feature or edit it. Now I'm just going to decrease the size. Go ahead, click OK. The next section is an example on how to use bodies in the modeling process. Note that in Fusion 360, you can also model as you would traditionally, creating sketched and placed features. Next, I want to create a second body. To do this, I'm going to use the Box tool from the Create menu. Click on Box. If you're wondering what you need to do next inside of Fusion, just pause your cursor for a second, and a tooltip will appear telling you what you need to do. Here I'm being prompted to select a plane to start. So I'm going to pick on the top plane. And here I'm just going to define a quick rectangle. And then I'm going to pull this up to give it depth. Now in the dialog box, I'm going to change the operation from join to new body. And as soon as I click OK, you'll see that body number two has been created in the browser. Next, I want to rotate body number two. To do that, I'm going to go under the modify menu. I'm going to click on the Move Copy tool. Then I'm going to select body number two. And then I'm going to define the pivot to be this bottom edge. Next, I want to rotate this box, creating a compound angle. So I'm going to rotate the box down 45 degrees. And I'm going to change my viewpoint. And I'm going to rotate it in the second axis again, 45 degrees. Go ahead, click OK. Currently, body number two intersects body number one. Visually, I can see that if I turn off the visibility of body number two and then body number one, you can see that those two bodies definitely intersect. Next, I want to remove this interference. To do this, I'm going to go under the Modify menu and click on the Combine tool. For the target body, I'm going to select body number one. For the tool body, I'm going to select body number two. I'm going to change the operation to Cut. Then I'm going to check the option to keep tools. With this option selected, body number two remains. If it was unchecked, body number two would be consumed. Now, if I turn off the visibility of body number two, you can see that I have a compound angle that was created. If you needed to sketch this manually, it'd be very difficult to create this feature. As I mentioned in the intro slides, if I want to work on both of these bodies in the context of an assembly, what I need to do is turn body number two into a component. First, I'm going to turn the visibility of body number two back on. And then I'm going to right click on body number two. And from the menu, click on create components from bodies. And here in the browser, you can see that component number two has been created. If you want to rename this, simply double click on it and then change its name. Next, I want to talk about 3D threads. I'm going to go ahead and make my cylinder file active again. 
Inside of Fusion 360, we have two methods for creating threads. The first method we're going to look at is going to be the hole tool. So from the create menu, I'm going to start the hole tool. Then I'm going to locate that hole by picking on that planar face. And then I'm going to drag the center point of the hole onto the center of that cylinder. Then in the hole dialog box, I'm going to change the tap type to tapped. Then in the bottom of the dialog box, you can change the size and the designation as required. Here at the bottom of the dialog box, we have an option here called Model. With this unchecked, we're going to create a cosmetic thread. Basically, a raster image will be applied, so it will look like a tapped hole, but it's really just a cylinder. So if you were to 3D print this, you would just get a cylinder. With the Model option selected, go ahead and click OK. Here, you can see that I now have a true 3D thread. The second method for creating the thread is to use the thread tool. From the create menu, click on the thread tool. With the thread tool, you can create both internal and external threads. Here, I'm going to select on this outside circular face. Note that if you do not want the thread to be full length, select near the edge where you want the thread to start. Now you can see a preview of the thread. If I don't want the thread to go full length, I'm going to uncheck full length. Then in the dialog box, specify the length of that thread. Then in the dialog box, you can adjust the size and designation as required. And note at the top of the dialog box, we do have this option for model. But just to show what this is going to look like, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So here you can see the cosmetic thread. If I want this to be modeled, again, I'm just going to edit that feature and select the model option. Go ahead and click OK. And you can see, again, that I have a nice threaded as you're designing, you may not want the model threads to always appear. Inside of Fusion 360, we give you a method for turning the model threads on or off. To do that, expand the document settings. And now you'll notice that we have threads listed here. So if I edit this from the dialog box and change this to model or cosmetic, go ahead and click OK. And you can see that both threads are now being shown as cosmetic. Again, if I want to change that back again, I can edit that change this back to model, and both threads will now be modeled. While you're designing, you may want to remove a section so you can see inside the component. To do so, I'm going to go under the Inspect menu and then click on Section Analysis. For the Section Analysis, you can either select on one of the origin planes, you can select on any plane or face, or a plane inside of Fusion 360. You can also adjust the offset as needed. We now have another entry in the browser called Analysis. So if you expand Analysis and click on the I symbol just to the left of that section, as you can see, I can turn it on or off. Next, I want to show you how you can get the mass properties of this component. In the browser, simply right click on the component's name. And from the menu, go ahead and click on Properties. In the Properties dialog box, I can see that the material is steel. If I scroll down the dialog box and expand the physical area, and scroll down, I can see the mass property information. So I'm going to go ahead and close this dialog box. Next, I want to change the material of the component. To do this, I'm going to right click on the component name in the browser and select physical material from the menu. Then from the physical material dialog box, select the desired folder. Once you find the material that you want to apply, click and drag that material onto the component and then close the dialog box. And as you would expect, if you go back and select on the properties for this component, the material has been changed to ABS, and the mass property has been updated. This completes this video on Fusion 360's modeling process. Thanks for watching.